Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It's been a minute, it feels like. It's been a minute since I've filmed. I'm on Lake Fork right now. I pre-fished it for about three or four hours yesterday. I did find some crappie. And uh, today we're actually gonna try out some new jigs that I got in the mail, or just before I got down here. Don't worry, there's a discount code in it for you. Uh, I found a school of black crappie actually. Most of the crappie here are white crappie, but I found a school of black crappie on just one tree. This is basically where I've been told to find them. Uh, well, this tree is actually not where I, I was supposed to find them, but branch trees. I know when you fish Lake of the Pines, even, even in Mississippi back in September when I fished it, we were finding the bigger fish just on a single tree, straight up and down, kind of like these guys out here. Straight up and down. Not really a ton of branches, but I guess if you want to find the crappie on Lake Fork right now, you got to find those branch trees, specifically on the edge of these creek channels. But I did find one kind of going back into a pocket. I was bass fishing. I just happened to see it on a live scope. Uh, so we're going to run over there. We're going to tie on some new jigs that I got in the mail and uh, hopefully put a limit in the boat. And normally when you see stuff like this on the bottom, I would think those are fish, but there's there's so many stumps and pieces of timber. There's a ball of shad right there. It's crazy. Ball of shad, ball of shad, ball of shad. And these are all trees sticking up. The one thing I, I'm always amazed at is whenever I come down south, you guys have your own private boat launches. That's crazy. You don't see that. For the most part, you don't see that up north. Drop the trolling motor down. But you don't see that up north. I don't even know if it's legal up north, but that would be awesome to have. Right, let's go find them on the live scope, and I'll show you what we're doing. It's not very many. Yesterday there was a bunch more, so they could have moved off. But here, there's definitely some on, on the bottom there. Let's see if we can get them to bite today. It's a little bit windier today than yesterday. There's some more too further out. All right, changing tactics. Unfortunately, uh, those school of black crappie that I found yesterday, which was like 13, 14 hours ago, is not there anymore. We really haven't had a big shift in weather either. Um, wind's still out of the south. They're a little stronger today. We're supposed to get a rainstorm, I believe, either late tomorrow night. And if you drive a thousand miles and you don't know where to fish, a good place to start is, of course, a bridge. Bridges are classic places for crappie to uh, hold up year round. In the springtime, they're gonna push all the way down. I don't know if you can see it. All the way down to uh, where the land meets the bridge in shallower water. And then towards the fall and the winter, they're gonna stack up in deeper water. Here we go. That screen's gonna flicker probably, but there's those fish right there. I know the screen's flickering. It's because the shutter speed isn't set on the GoPro. To get these fish, I'm switching up. This is a jig and spoon. Love using them for ice fishing. Uh, we're gonna find out if this works as a Pete's Tackle. You guys, anything you guys want at Pete's Tackle Shop.com, you can use promo code CROPPY, C R A P P I E, all lowercase, all lowercase. That gets you 10% off. Yeah, don't say I didn't do anything for you guys. All right, let's pitch this thing in there. They're about 10 feet out. They're, these bridges, they have concrete um, like slabs between these two pilings. So you got to get it below that slab, get it on the one side of it so you can get at these fish. This is a flutter spoon. I just landed on that piece of concrete, I think. These fish are stacked up on that middle piling. And normally this wouldn't be uh, such a hard thing to do, except for the fact that these waves suck. The spoon doesn't work because it doesn't look like they're, they're super aggressive. We might have to go back to jigs. 
there he is. Finally got him. Ooh. Is that a black nose? I think that's my black nose. That is my first mohawk crappie I've ever caught right there. <laughs> that's awesome. These are uh, some underspins that Pete's Tackle has. If I can get this guy out, he smacked it too. These are some underspins Pete's Tackle makes. I use them for ice fishing actually. Probably should use them more for open water. And this is the uh, Chansey's Crappie Candy. A little shad pattern, minnow pattern. That's a solid, solid eater. <laughs> that is my first mohawk. That's awesome. Throw him in the live well real quick. get back in there because there's more fish to be caught and eventually if the wind calms down a little bit I'll be able to get a second camera on this live scope but right now the camera I have it just sits on a tripod and with these waves it just would fall in the water so let's see if we can catch another one. Oh, there he is yep there we go Whew. Is that another, is that another mohawk or is it just a black? That might be a hybrid. S solid fish though. That's a hybrid, I think. So it's just a straight black. That might be a straight black crappie there. They are thick in Texas, my goodness. They aren't quite, they're in quite like a fall. Usually their bellies are bloated, but it's been so warm. They haven't quite hit that feed bag yet, I don't think. Throw this guy in the live well. You know, yesterday I was using a hair jig that was kind of like a, a bluegill pattern. You know, orange, yellow, green. Something very similar to this, and that's what they're hitting on, so. Seems to be working. There he is. Oh, he's just a dink. He's just a dink. I was gonna say, felt some weight on there, but he didn't feel very big. It's cause that guy's, I don't know if that's a, that's a, that's a Wisconsin fish right there. I didn't come to Texas for those fish. Probably still be a quality eater if he was a keeper, but I don't, I don't know if he is. I don't really care. I got some bigger keepers in the boat. I want to talk about that first place that I, I was fishing. And I guess if you're driving thousand miles to a place you've never fished before, first place I would start is a bridge. If you're going for crappie, even if you're going for bass, the bridges just hold tons of bait fish. They hold a lot of different species of fish. Good place to start. The place that I started this morning, um, it's a small creek that goes in probably, I don't know, two, 300 yards. It's not very big. Um, but what I noticed yesterday when I was fishing for bass was there's a ton of shad in that little pocket. And the shad were actually busting last night. That's why I was bass fishing. And uh, I was focusing on trees that were in the deeper part of the pocket. There's kind of a little channel that goes in somewhere in that 20 foot range, 20, 25 foot. And that's where these fish are. They're, they're suspended down 20, 25 feet. Uh, some of them are up in that 15 foot range, but a lot of them are around that 20 foot mark. And I was just kind of live scoping trees. You probably could see them on your side imaging. Uh, they were really packed together. These black crappie, I'm actually surprised. I've, I've caught two white crappie and I've caught uh, three black crappie yesterday and a black two black crappie today and that hybrid, that uh, mohawk, black nose crappie. But those black crappie school up a lot tighter, it seems like. Uh, specifically in these southern lakes than those white crappie. Those bigger white crappie, they're gonna be off by themselves. Again, we're, we're focused on these. These are probably pounders that I'm catching here. Later this week, we're gonna try to catch those two plus, potentially three pound fish that Lake Fork known, is known for. Oh. There he is, got him that time. I missed him. 
first time. As you can tell, boat control is super important. Oh, hooked him in the back. Funky hooked him. He's probably a keeper. This is just a school of black crappie right here. Schooled up real tight. That's definitely a keeper. I could throw him on the bump board, but I'm pretty sure that's a keeper. Where is my bump board? Oh yeah. All right, mouth, mouth closed, kind of closed. 11 and a quarter. You gotta be 10 on Lake Fork. And I actually saw fish suspended out from these pillars. That's, that's how I did it. I scanned probably seven or eight of these pillars. This was the one that I saw fish on. And so threw a waypoint down on it, which I'll show you here. And went up there. I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I do have the live scope. I, I know some of you guys don't have that. But even with the side imaging, you'll be able to see this. You'll be able to set up. Usually these fish are stacked up underneath. There we go. I know the screen's gonna flicker, but they're stacked up underneath this, I guess, this, whoo, concrete slab between these two pillars. That's where these fish are. They, su they suspend right below it. Provides them safety, and it provides them a really good ambush point when bait fish swim by. Well, apparently I forgot to hit record, but just caught that guy. It's about a 12 and a quarter solid Texas crappie. They're fat. And I was saying that uh, these the black crappie are going to be a lot more aggressive even though today they're not super aggressive but these uh, white crappie I've noticed from fishing for them yesterday. They're a bit snobbish when it comes to jigs. <laughs> for whatever reason the white crappie you got to get the pattern profiled just right and then you gotta get the color just right. Cause I only caught two white crappie yesterday, but these black crappie, if you stick it in front of their nose, kind of take them off a little bit, they will smack it. Talk about this setup. This is a brand new 12 foot. I've said this a couple times, but this is a 12 foot rear seat super grip that ACC just came out with, I think last spring. Uh, they're coming out with a 13 foot pole for this live scope. Um, I actually used a 16 footer in Mississippi because uh, when you're fishing for really pressured fish that extra two three feet really helps uh, get that bait in front of the boat but uh, 1,000 size reel if you want a little bit better balance go to a 2,000 size reel 10 pound braid yeah this is 10 pound braid whenever you go south for crappie specifically Texas Mississippi Arkansas Oklahoma you go with braid. Um, this is probably considered light, light braid line for crappie. I know quite a few guys actually use 15 to 20 pound braid. But there are still a bunch of fish down there. Let's see if we can catch a few more on this pile. All right. Well, it gave these fish probably two and a half hours to kind of relax. It's a Monday, so there's probably nobody else out here pressuring them. That bite just shut off real hard about 11 o'clock. Did not, I changed up a lot. Changed up uh, blade baits, lipless, hair jigs. There he is, got him. This might be a white crappie. Oh my goodness, it's a good, that's a good one. Black crappie on the bridge. Solid one too. Oh man, they are some fatties. Probably should not have held that up while that guy was going past, but <laughs> oh well. He's some fat, healthy crappie. They're hammering that jig. Come on. Wow, he smoked it too. Come on, dude. There we go. That's what you come to Texas for. 
solid, solid eaters. What is this guy? It's gotten close to 13. Oh yeah, he's just shy of 13. Just shy of 13 there. Healthy fish. There he is, got him that time. I think that's the same guy that missed it on the first drop. Man, these are so... Here's some healthy, healthy crappie. My goodness. All blacks today. Have not caught a single white crappie. Which is uh, pretty amazing. These are just... Oh man, these are some healthy fish. There's that kind of this concrete slab between the two pillars. I know it's flashing black, but between those two pillars here. Ah, we're behind it. You can see those fish right there on that pillar. I'm just pitching that jig and kind of letting it slow fall. It seems like I can see them kind of rush up real quick, but I've tried to just put it right in front of their face and just have it dead still and they won't really tap it. So you got to keep that bait moving. That might be the key to kind of get these crappie to start biting again. Before this morning, when I was on these fish, I, you could just drop it right in, hold it right in front of their nose, and they'd come up and smack it. Well, that is going to wrap it up for the day. This is officially the end of day one uh, on Lake, Lake Fork filming anyway. Got to try out the new 12-foot rear seat ACC. ACC crappie sticks. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. I've been on the water for about nine hours right now, so. But definitely, definitely worth it. These these Texas crappie, I'm, I'm amazed. I didn't catch a single white crappie today, but these, look how thick those black crappie are. I got shoulders on those things. Lake Fork is a place you need to travel to to go to crappie fish. I'm staying at Lake Fork Marina, and it's actually, it's right across the, uh, the lake here. This is what I was using today. Uh, Pete's Tackle Underspin, and then these are called uh, Chansey's Crappie Candy, I believe, on the website. There you go. That had a double jig set up on it. This is actually the color they were hitting on. This olive, it's almost like a watermelon, I guess. Kind of an olive green and a orange, pink, orange type of, type of belly. Didn't catch my limit, wanted to catch 25, didn't catch that. I did catch eight, I believe. Um, but th these fish are, you know, some of them on the bridges. If you're first time going to a new lake, bridges are by far the best spot to try first. They are the most pressured fish, which is why, this guy's dead, but which is why uh, sometimes it's really hard to make them bite, but keep at it. And it can be for a long day, but those fish stay there pretty much year round. They just move from the shallow side during the spring They'll move to the shallow side of the bridge to the deep channels during the winter time. And that's where they transition back and forth. Spring they're in shallow, winter they're in that deep creek channel. Right now they're sitting on the edge of that creek channel, uh, a lot of these fish. Tomorrow I'm gonna be trying to focus on some deep water timber, uh, which is a little more complicated and can be a little more difficult to fish if you don't have live scope. Um, but if you, if you just got a regular side imaging, down imaging 2D with a mapping system, uh, start off with bridges it's a great place to catch fish like this in texas awesome again reminder petestackleshop.com you get 10 percent off when you use promo code crappie lowercase c-r-a-p-p-i-e 10 percent off when you use that huge thanks to pete's tackle for part partly sponsoring this trip making it happen so i can actually come down to texas and and film just a reminder 1000 size PC Fun Carbon X reel. You could probably go to a 2000 size with this 12 footer. It'd probably balance a little bit better. The balance right now is kind of right about here. With the 2000 size, it's pretty much right where you hold it. Um, these things are only 5.9 ounces. You can hold this thing all day. I did. 10 pound braid. Highly recommend braid. Bob, you probably want to go to 15 to 20 because these are what's considered small in Texas. Uh, if you get onto the big ones, you're definitely going to hope you have 15 to 20 pound braid. All right, that's going to wrap it up for me. I'm going to get off the water here. 
hit something to eat. Appreciate you watching as always. If you have any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. Ask me anything about the setup, kind of how I found these fish. I always appreciate hearing from you. We'll see you.